All right, welcome. Gosh, I'm excited for this discussion. Melissa, great to see you. Serge, nice meeting you. Thanks for being here this morning. How are you two doing? doing great. great, we're great, Al. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. Well, hey, we got a great topic to discuss. I mean, coaching has been a prominent theme in organizations really over the past 20 years, and particularly with COVID, with remote workers, you know, having a collaborative thinking partner, someone who can facilitate development and help people get their job done, you know, have that collaborative thinking partner to really understand where someone is, where they need to go, what are the strategies? And you all have some perspectives and ideas on how 360s can facilitate this. And it's been a long discussion back and forth of what is the role of 360s and should it be part of the coaching and development process? So if you would, please introduce yourselves and a little bit about what you're gonna talk about today. Sure, Melissa, how about you? To- Sure, sure. Thank you. Um, So uh, I work for Medallia and I've been there for about a year and a half. And prior to joining Medallia, I was actually a customer where I implemented employee experience and customer experience programs. And that's why we're here to talk to you today. Serge? Um, Perfect. Yeah, really nice to meet everybody. Uh, My name is Serge Derby. I'm a product manager at Stella Connect, which was recently acquired by Medallia this fall. And I'm kind of responsible for the coaching and performance management aspects of the platform. All right. Well, you all have some slides to uh, share. So I'm going to get out of your way and then we'll come back and discuss. So enjoy and uh, talk to you in a few minutes. Thank you so much. So, so thrilled to talk with you all today. Um, as Serge just mentioned, uh, Stella Connect was a recent acquisition um, to the Medallia family, and I'm so excited they're here. As I mentioned, I have been in human resources my entire career. And when I saw Stella Connect, I was so excited about the opportunity that it brings uh, for employee experience. And it was really, uh, for me, a different perspective. And so I thought it may be for some other um, HR practitioners. And that's really why I wanted to share it today and share a little bit of our thinking about it and why it's so important in the employee experience. And then Serge is actually gonna show you some examples and how it really works. Um, Cause I found it really re- unique and thought you all would too. So our agenda for today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, EX and CX together and how that's really enabled and enhanced with coaching um, and then share the example and then really wrap up by talking about how coaching in our minds is really the new 360. Um, So you'll see where we build to that at the end. So at Medallia, when we talk about employee experience, this is really how we think about it, the words here on the screen. The idea is that employees come to work every day to make a difference in the lives of their customers, whether that's through serving customers or creating a new accounting process or programming software or whatever it might be, they come to work to make a difference. And we as employers unintentionally put obstacles in their way that make it more difficult for them with the systems they have to use, administrative processes, um, and those types of things. And employee experience is really about better enabling them and empowering them to do what they came to do. And that's make a difference in the lives of their customers. And that's what Stella Connect is really all about. Um, So we often hear people saying that happy employees equals happy customers. Um, And to some extent that's true, but it's really an overly simplistic view of how employee experience would impact customer experience. We can think of many ways that we can make our employees incredibly happy um, without having a positive impact on customer experience. If you think about the retail setting, employees I think would be thrilled if they didn't have to work evenings and weekends, but customers certainly would not be happy with that since those are prime shopping hours. So we took a look at some research to get a more informed view of how employee experience can impact customer experience. So I took it to, look, we looked at two uh, prominent researchers, uh, Fred Reicheld in customer experience, uh, the father of NPS, the Net Promoter System, and then William Macy, a great friend of mine, an excellent researcher um, in employee experience, and many of you may know him um, as the founder of Velterra that was eventually purchased by the Corporate Executive Board. Um, So these two um, researchers were looking actually from the customer side with Fred and Bill looking on the employee side and came to some very similar conclusions about how employee experience impacts customer experience. 
they both found that um, leadership and managers need to set the example on how employees should treat um, and create a great customer experience, that we need reward and recognition systems aligned uh, with customer goals and customer experience, and the customer feedback needs to be integrated. And even Bill, studying it on the employee side, talked about having customer feedback available to employees so that they can continually improve. And you'll see this is core uh, to Stella Connect. And then there were some differences in what they found. Uh, Fred, of course, was very focused on customers and employees being able to take action on behalf of customers, delight and innovate for customers, and for employees to feel really inspired to deliver for customers. And Bill found um, a focus really on employees, of course, and he talked about employees needing to have the resources available, having internal support, and coworkers actually having the skills needed to deliver for the customer. So when we bring these two um, research um, papers together, we're able to create a model of how employee experience impacts customer experience. So uh, they both talked about company culture, that's leadership and management setting the example, um, reward and recognition systems um, aligned with customer outcomes, and then customer feedback being available and integrated. And then there's the element of employee support, really empowerment, enablement, and of course, coaching. If employees are able to get feedback from their customers, it's available to them, it's integrated in their work, they need to be able to have coaching on that on a regular basis. They are not gonna be able to improve single-handedly, but they need to be able to create action plans, work with the coach, continually improve based on the feedback they're receiving from customers or from others in the organization. We'll talk about that too. Um, and then customer action, right? Being able to take action on that feedback um, delighting customers and innovating for customers. And when we bring this together, this really leads to inspired employees that create customer advocates. And really there's a virtuous cycle here. Um, and Surge has really helped me see this. Um, the idea that as employee experience gets better, right, we, that creates a better customer experience, but also a good customer experience creates a better employee experience, this virtual cycle that when I deliver something, I make a difference in the lives of my customers, and then I see their positive reaction, that's a continuous positive cycle. And it also can happen the negative way. If I'm an employee trying to deliver an experience, trying to make a difference in the lives of my customers, and I'm not able to do it because something is in my way, I'm experiencing obstacles, and there's a negative customer experience, it makes me feel poorly. And then we have a negative cycle here. So, so much opportunity for the two to actually influence each other. And we often don't hear about how customer experience impacts the employee's experience. So why does this matter? So it matters because 25% of the US workforce is in a customer service job. Now that statistic is just about customer service jobs. If you think about all jobs that are customer facing, the percentage even goes much higher. Um, and we've seen so much um, about how important the customer experience is to future loyalty. You can see in the quote from Microsoft um, into actually switching um, to another, another competitor. So um, at Medallia with Stella Connect, we've partner with so many different types of companies from startups, and you can see so many different types of startups that work with us and coaching their employees to continually improve and up to big major brands that use it on a regular basis. I recently had an interaction with William Sonoma and was able to get um, the surveys from them and really have this connection with the person I worked with on the phone. It's great to see and Serge is gonna show that to you in just one moment. And the last thing I just wanna cover um, before we show you um, how it works is really our approach to coaching. So we talked about the inspiration for employees. Employees truly want to be inspired. Like I said, they want to make a difference. Um, and really for employees to be able to make a difference in the lives of their customers, they need ongoing coaching so that they're able to continually see and improve um, and make those changes. And in coaching, Listening is so crucial for the coach, the manager to be able to hear what employees are saying, what customers are saying, and bring that together to really enable and empower employees to make a difference. And then creating a safe environment for new ideas. Part of coaching is about 
learning from the employees and what ideas they have. They're on the front line with the customers every day. And when they hear feedback from the customers, they often know what's driving that feedback. Um, so making it a place where employees can try out new ideas to continually improve. Um, and we have a great blog um, on this that we've written that we'd love to share with you. So we'll make sure that's available. All right, I'd like to turn it over to Serge. Um, do you wanna to speak to this slide and then, um, then I'll, I'll turn off my sharing? Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you so much for the setup, Melissa. Um, so at Medallia and at Stella Connect, kind of the way that we um, view our like core mission is really to empower frontline teams to perform at their best. And there's kind of these three tenants that we think are critical um, to being able to empower those frontline team members. And so that's kind of the ability to fully see performance. How am I doing in real time on demand? I should have full access to that understanding. I should be recognized and celebrated for the great work that I do. And then I should have the tools to improve both from like a top down coaching perspective, as well as a self improvement. If I want to take things into my own hands and drive my own growth, I can absolutely do that as well. So I will go ahead and share my screen and we can jump right in. Okay. Wonderful. So I think to start out, what I would love to show everybody is the basis of Stella and kind of what is the main driver of a lot of what a frontline team member actually um, interacts with in Stella is this customer feedback. And so this could be internal feedback, this can be customer feedback. And this is this idea of a very simple Uber style rating survey that is emailed um, after specific interactions with a given individual asking you about how is your experience with that person today. So in this case, it's Rachel. How is your experience with Rachel? You see where she's from. You see a little bit of a bio. So very humanized, personalized experience. And then very similar to um, kind of the Uber style rating again, if it's kind of rated positively a four or five star, um, they have kind of six different areas of excellence, these complements. And then if it's rated three or below, we have areas of improvement, which are those areas that maybe could have done a little bit better um, and kind of could have uh, led to a better customer experience. So as a frontline team member, what I'm primarily seeing is this dashboard. I have full access to this and I easily see exactly um, what customers are saying about me, how I'm performing, those areas where I can improve, those areas where I'm doing really well, as well as celebrations that I've received from my coach or from other people in the company, as well as any like action items and action plans that I have to do. And so what we find is that when team members have access to a dashboard like this, where they can um, in real time see what customers are saying and actually implement changes on their own, we see a really um, virtuous cycle, like Melissa mentioned, where EX is driving CX and CX drives EX. And so as a frontline team member, I'm actually able to see what a customer says and implement changes right on my next interaction. Um, so we see sometimes in contact centers, for instance, where it is a high volume um, transactional process where people are coming in, they're getting a, customer, a piece of customer feedback from a call 20 minutes ago and are implementing changes within an hour, um, kind of right on that next phone call, they're already taking action on how to improve. And the knowledge and awareness of that is so key to being able to have frontline team members participate in their own growth and really continue to drive it, not only through top-down coaching, but real-time continuously. We also, as a team member, um, you have full access to this page, which gives you like um, trends over time information. So you can really dig in and understand how am I doing in various different types of interactions. So in this case, um, these are phone and chat inter interactions for a customer service representative. And I can dive in at any point and really see what were those underlying pieces of feedback? Um, what were those um, surveys saying about me at any given point to understand how I can change and how I can um, continue to improve? And it's really also about the celebration, right? So it's not just about kind of finding um, items where I'm struggling, but about places where I can um, improve, I mean, where I can celebrate those little wins as well. So in this instance, for the areas of improvement, I can easily come in here and see like friendliness is something that I've struggled with in two different interactions. And I can see exactly those interactions and what the customer said um, and how I can maybe uh, lead to a better customer experience the next time. 
So this button of celebration is actually the most clicked button in all of Stella. And it's something that we have throughout our application. So I'll be showing it to you throughout this. Um, and it's all about kind of how can we celebrate those little wins? And um, we find that in especially the virtual world now, um, since COVID's hit, is any amount of little recognition, any amount of connection, any type of little positive affirmations and kudos that I can receive from managers, from peers, um, is really key to my happiness um, at work. We also have leaderboards. So we're all about kind of gamifying this experience and making a really fun and engaging platform. And so we find that when um, team members are logging in and engaging um, inside of Stella, that they actually end up with higher um, customer satisfaction scores and actually are creating that virtuous loop that Melissa showed. So we have um, individual-based leaderboards and we also have team-based leaderboards for companies that maybe don't want to have necessarily competition amongst individuals, but amongst um, like stores and retail is something we find really, really um, incentivizing is how can I compete against the other stores in my district or region and kind of having this friendly sense of competition at a group level um, also builds a lot of team camaraderie that we find. We also have kind of the idea of top down coaching, right? So. Um, the idea of a manager coming in and looking at interactions that I'm having with customers and actually providing me feedback, um, whether that's annotations and specific little pieces of coaching on a given transcript or call recording um, or other like interactions. So we see a lot of times um, role plays and things like that in the more retail environment or shadowing a customer interaction. And we come in here and managers can actually grade that interaction and they can say, um, where they're, where that team member is doing well and where they're kind of struggling. And it's all about having that team member participate. So what we find is the most successful always is when team members can actually come in and they can communicate. So they can come in and they can ask the coach in this case, hey, can I get some help with how I can better represent our brand? Because I noticed that you said no to that. I didn't um, create an experience that properly represented the brand. So I can come in and I can ask a question and Aaron is notified about that and we can have a whole conversation here. And I can actually even request to even discuss this in our more formal coaching sessions by coming here and saving it. And so you can see this was saved by me and I wrote a quick little reason of, can we discuss this one? And now when I go into my one-on-one -on -one sessions, um, that piece of um, that interaction, right? That grade is sitting right here. And Aaron now knows when he's coming in to coach me that this is something that I wanna discuss, right? And this is something that, um, it's something that's on my mind. It's some place that I think I can improve. It's some place that I want to learn and we can drive that conversation. And so for Aaron, it also really makes um, his coaching so much more effective because it's really tailored to me, right? And my ability as um, Nicole here to um, drive my own um, growth and improvement is key to my own success. On those coaching notes, I can also actually add my own notes, right? And I can come here and I can see exactly how I'm performing across those various metrics. I can see pieces of feedback that I've saved. So this is something I can do just like with um, that QA review that I showed. You can save and mention um, a piece of feedback as something that you want to discuss in a session. And then when we come into this from the perspective of Aaron as a coach, Aaron has quick access to all of the recent people that he has coached here. And so if we go to Nicole, we can see all of those pieces, um, including what Nicole has saved, but we can even see things that um, perhaps I've saved as well um, and other people have saved. So this could be other coaches and I can easily add these right into the session. And so what happens then is you get, um, whether it's adding a metric or adding a piece of feedback or QA review, all of these come in with dedicated note blocks. So what we find is in a lot of coaching, there's not, um, there's not a lot of context. And so what we've found is that when you coach with context, that coaching becomes so much more effective. It's no longer as me as the coach telling you that you're doing something wrong. We're kind of bringing in that metric. We're bringing in what that customer said. We're bringing in the actual graded interaction. And we're gonna come right off of that and we're gonna link out to L&D content of ways that you can improve this metric. And all of this is really tied together and organized. So as a team member, I'm very clear on what 
I can do to get better. And I have a very clear place to go, right? It's never um, just on me to figure this all out on my own, right? It's a, it's a very much a collaborative process between that coach and coachee. And when that happens and you have that effect um, is when we see um, the most high performing teams um, in organizations that we work with. Again, we have those kudos, the celebration. We try to do this throughout the entire platform. Um, like I said, any amount of that little fun um, can really liven up a day, especially in customer facing roles where you're going from interaction to interaction um, and you can get really just tiring and kind of become a slog and coming in here and just seeing a little um, celebration about you, getting to kind of get a little confetti all over my screen. It's a really nice little break um, within my day and to cheer up my day. From there, action plans. Action plans are so important to kind of clearly communicating to coaches how they should be um, improving, how they should be um, working to get better and tracking those over time. And so as a coach, I can come in and I can create any new action item. Again, we try to have emojis and um, make it all fun anywhere we can. We think that's just a really big part of our ethos and making a platform that um, employees actually love to use. So often um, these platforms are not actually truly engaging for those frontline team members. And we want to um, absolutely kind of create the platform that they love. Um, and that's really this idea of we're cheering you along, we're your friend rooting you along, um, helping you to get better, celebrating your wins. And when you kind of build that relationship with your coachee, um, both from the software perspective and from a coaching perspective, uh, we think that that's kind of um, the best recipe for success in having um, team members open-minded to growth um, and really taking that on, taking on those challenges. And so team members can absolutely come in here and they can complete these action items um, and say the ones that they have um, completed so far. And they can also complete those from other areas in the application, like the home screen, um, where I showed you, you have those clear um, action plans. And then personal notes, this is something that we found in coaching happens a lot is uh, both coaches and coaches have certain notes that they're taking throughout a coaching session that really is just for them. And this could be something as simple as for a coach saying, you know, make sure to ask them about their cousin's birthday party this weekend in our next session to kind of keep that relationship and really like humanize the experience. Or these can be things more like uh, performance management related um, where someone's being put on a performance plan um, or you want to make notes um, that are only visible to you. So really, what we find is this holistic solution of being able to have exactly what customers are saying, exactly what your managers are saying, um, kind of on a graded basis or just on an annotation basis, having team members participate in their own growth and have all of this culminate in coaching sessions that are really based off of coaching with context and not just pie in the sky ideas, but having tangible examples of things um, that have happened and how we can use those to continue to drive growth or continue to drive um, that recognition and celebration is where we found the most success um, at Stella. So I will pause there. Excellent, thank you, Serge. And I can go back to sharing a couple of quick slides, a couple of quick slides to wrap up. Um, but I think um, as you've seen what Serge has shared, it can give you a sense of why me coming from people analytics and seeing something like this for the first time, I was so excited um, by the possibility. So I think you might have seen some of the notes um, Al and I were talking about um, and and some of the, the ideas about how this can be used for 360. Um, so you've probably seen a lot of these, these quotes here that I'm showing on the screen now about the manager as coach, that companies are really moving towards this model where managers are much more a coach, that they're not the ones who used to do the job and know it the best, but they're actually helping employees figure out how to solve problems and respond to things on the fly as things change so quickly. Um, and the idea that, that coaching should be 
really simple and really quick, um, that it would be less than 10 minutes and that it would happen daily instead of, you know, what we often do now to give feedback to employees is something that happens once or twice a year, maybe even quarterly, but not um, as frequent as this. Um, so really the reason why we call it um, or bring to you this idea of coaching is the new 360 is when we look at traditional 360s right there, once a year, there's you know a data bank of questions typically that companies will choose from that are standardized. Um, usually the feedback's anonymous and employees are given a summary of feedback to kind of figure out how to develop, right? Um, I'm sure the best practice would be to have someone work through the 360 feedback with the employee and help them figure out how to work. Um, but what I've seen in my experience being in HR for my career is typically employees are delivered um, this summary of feedback and they don't know who it came from. And of course, there are some positive things in there, which we as humans ignore and go right to the negative and wallow in these difficult pieces of feedback that are not in context. And we don't understand um, why we've been given this feedback. And now we kind of have to pick ourselves up off the floor and figure out how to respond to this. It's so difficult um, for anyone who's who's received a 360 or been in the business of administering 360s. Uh, it's really difficult for employees um, and there often is little assistance um, or tools after the 360 has been run, um, even though that may not be best practice. Another comment about the traditional 360 is it often doesn't include the customer, right? We get feedback from so many different people internally, but arguably the customer should be one of the most important people to get feedback from. And we have internal customers, external customers, suppliers, right? Um, external partners, there's so many who could be contributing to this. Um, and that's part of what Stella can um, make available. Um, so at Medallia, we really talk about these kind of three potential ways it could be run. There could be a traditional 360 and plenty of value in that. Um, there could also be continuous feedback. Um, as Serge was showing you that um, internal employees or external customers could provide feedback to employees at any time so that we can understand how are we progressing towards our goals? How are we doing as we're working together on a project and make it really easy to continually understand how we're doing, ask others for feedback um, or just have others give us feedback um, as they see the opportunity. Um, and in Medallia Coaching, um, the questions can be dynamic. We can design them to be different for particular jobs, right? We don't have to give everyone the same questions because maybe a software developer might have very different questions than you might see for um, a call center agent um, or a retail employee. Um, it really enables um, two-way so that we can understand what's being said, um, the context in which it's being said, and have someone helping us figure out how to improve, make plans, create actions, have ongoing development uh, with guidance. It's really a great way of creating learning and development from the feedback. Um, another way I've seen a 360 misused, right, is all the information comes in, it goes to the manager, and then the manager distills it and tells the employee, right? So the employee's really getting all of the feedback um, through the lens of the manager, instead of getting it direct from all those who've provided the feedback. So, so many great opportunities here, how we can bring the 360 um, to a better level where it can provide more context, where it can be more real time, where we can really be learning ongoing with assistance. Uh, I just saw so much potential when I saw this and I hadn't seen this before coming um, from people analytics. And so I thought you all would be interested in seeing it. Um, and I'm going to come back. <laughs> I am. I, I cannot tell you how. I'm going to use the word again. You've probably heard me say it too many times. Excited about what you're doing because, having grown up in retail and uh, going back to what Disney did in the '90s and the Sears service profit chain, which was featured in the late '90s as well, and the Experience Economy it, book came out the late. Uh, 90s, I'll say it again, the late 90s was a very kind of employee experience, customer experience um, 
nascent time. And here we are 20 plus years later, and we're trying to figure out how to bring it to life and enable it ongoing. And that's obviously what you just talked to. Um, and that's very different than trying to create these dashboards and linkages that were done on an event driven basis once every blue moon. And now you're able to do it real time and dynamic. So there's context to your point around why am I doing this and very pointed on what actions you know to be taken. So certainly celebrating uh, what you're doing. So I have, I have a couple you know questions about it because you know, when we talk about coaching as a role of managers and there's this idea that uh, are they in fact trained to, are they qualified to develop people? And that's a skill that needs nurturing. And what I'm seeing here is a, a framework, a guide. Uh, you know, it's not only a tool, but it provides some structure for managers and coaches to do that particular role. Is, is that how you're viewing it as effectively an aid to help with that communication process? What are your thoughts there? I'll let you respond first, Serge, and then I'll add in. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely. So that's what we hear so often from managers um, is either I'm not sure what to coach on. There's just this anxiety of a blank page as well. I come to this blank page and I need to learn. I need to decide what I'm going to talk about this week. Mm -hmm. And so what we've tried to do is really when you land there throughout the week, you're seeing pieces of feedback, you're conducting those evaluations and those team members are also saving those and saying, here are things I want to discuss. So when you're going to sit down and prepare your session, there's actually all of these things already waiting for you to kind of mm -hmm. say, here's actually are the right things to be discussing this week. And now the mm -hmm. onerous isn't on me to really go and understand, like, and kind of go investigate to um, decide what I need to talk about. All of that's already sitting there. And now I can really focus on how do I most effectively talk about this subject that the team members requested to talk about? Um, mm -hmm. And it really switches the dynamic to that. Yeah, and just to, to pick up on that, because coaching for some has been, uh, I'll just say it, I was gonna, I was hesitant on whether or not I was gonna say it, but it's analogous to like therapy. And some men in particular are, oh, I don't, I don't need coaching. I, I don't need to develop. I know the relationship between employee experience and customer experience. I know it intuitively. It's been researched for 20 plus years. However, the underlying uh, dynamics of customers, employees, colleagues, work environments, they change. So to what I see you all doing is appreciating those changes. So those nudges can happen, those habits can be formed. And instead of framing it as a problem to be solved, this can actually look at what's going well and leaning into those things that are going well, a la the celebrations that uh, you are, are bringing to life. Um, Melissa, is that how you're framing it as well or seeing it? Uh, that it's not just uh, like a punitive, oh gosh, let's fix what's wrong, but let's like lean into what's right as well. So it's more inviting to coaches, managers, and uh, employees alike. Yeah, I love your pointing that out, Al, and I'll, I'll ask Serge to add on after my comments, um, but I've seen so much great research, particularly Alan Colquitt about performance management, mm -hmm. right? And I, mm -hmm. I think about that here, that so often um, it can be focused on the negative and that we're not looking at the positive. So I love the mm -hmm. celebrations throughout and the opportunity to really see what are we getting right? And both the employee and the manager see it. The manager's not distilling it and then bring it to the employee through their lens. The mm -hmm. employee's getting to see it firsthand too. And both can prepare mm -hmm. uh, for coaching sessions by glancing at what is the feedback? What are the trends in the feedback? So I can really see uh, where I'm doing well and where I have an opportunity to improve. And then the manager is just helping me figure out what I might do next. Instead of saying, here's what you're doing wrong. Mm. How are we going to work on this together? Right. How mm. can I help you support you? I mean, it's, it's, it's just a much better orientation than us bracing for the negativity that's going to come and never celebrating um, all the great things that we do. Right. So I see so much, so much potential in that. And Serge, do you want to add? Yeah, the one thing I would maybe add to it is just in the quality assurance space in QA. So when you call into a support center and they say that this call is recorded for quality assurance purposes and training purposes, they actually are rec recorded and people do actually listen to those phone calls. And we often we often see it's really about catching um, the team member doing something wrong. And so what we have a saying at Stella is about that our tool is more about coaching, not catching. 
So we actually allow you to come in and review an interaction without even grading it at all. You can mm. come in and just leave annotations on the transcript and say, here's a little part of the transcript where I think that you could have done a bit better. And you don't need mm. to penalize them. You don't need to say that you did something wrong here. It's about how do I actually like tell you something that you can do better. Um, mm -hmm. And so we find that to be really, really effective. And there's also a great Harvard Business School um, study about the golden ratio about you should be receiving five pieces of positive feedback for every one piece of negative feedback. Um, and that's actually what drives the most effective um, environment for a team member to grow and actually want to improve. And so with Stella, you actually do see that ratio playing out in the customer feedback where it, our feedback very much skews positively. So team members are seeing lots of positive feedback for every negative piece of feedback. And then that actually kind of makes them want to take that negative piece of feedback to heart and how can I actually change that? So um, those are the things I've done. Yeah, I, I love it. I want to come back to the five to one uh, ratio and I want to respond uh, or actually ask Oksana's question and I'll read it verbatim and uh, one of you can pick it up. Uh, how do you work with employees who continue to lag behind or plateau you know, in this is coaching process? Not everybody will be on a constant improvement trajectory or be a, a top performer. I've, what is your initial re response to, to that notion that yeah, it's not a just a continuous path forward either for an employee or for probably a, a customer group over time. I mean, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, so I guess I'll go first and then Serge, if you'll please add. Yeah. Um, so I actually think the harder one is the top performers, the ones who are continually getting so much great feedback and want to mm -hmm. continually improve, you know, and where, how do we coach them? I think arguably they're harder to coach the best performers mm -hmm where those who do lag behind um, or, or seem to be plateauing have plenty of you know opportunities. And the really great thing about Stella is it's bringing that feedback from colleagues and customers directly so they can keep seeing it and seeing their opportunity. And then the coach's role is really, again, like I said before, supporting them. Um, and there's a lot more opportunity there. Mm. Um, but Serge, what, what would you say? The, the thing that I would add maybe is um, this idea of micro goals that we find to be um, work really well, both on the positive side of an overachiever that's kind of at a 4.92 CSAT and we wanna get them to 4.95 still, or someone that, you know, the expectation is 4.8, but they're at a 4.6 and we know we're not gonna get them to a 4.8 right away. But how do we create these little micro goals just for this week? Here's a really achievable, small mm -hmm. um, kind of chunk of work that you can do. And it's not this grand, over the quarter, here's your overall success rate. Um, it's about these little micro one week intervals of here's what we can do this week to get better. And that's what we find to be really effective as well. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> I get excited because, you know, there's been research long, you know, in a variety of forms over the past 20 plus years that shows that, you know, what are key drivers of disengagement or low engagement? And it's lack of career opportunities, lack of development opportunities. And this is really an opportunity for people to feel seen, feel heard and, and, and feel empowered. And going to that five to one ratio, it's very difficult in personal lives, it's very difficult in professional lives. So I just wanna put out a, a notion um, I have talked about this and researched it myself, the idea that feedback requires a clear definition of what it is because many people are allergic to it because it creates a fight, flight, or freeze response. And the idea that this pr can provide a platform where as opposed to feedback being seen as a criticism or calling out an obvious thing that's going well, it's, that's more kind of a pat on the back and attaboy, because um, we all know that for feedback or perspectives or ideas to be helpful, they have to be truthful and specific. They can't just be g generic. So my, my question to you in this idea of people feeling seen, feeling heard and empowered, the idea that we're observing people and calling it out, saying, I see you, and then we're staying in curiosity and asking questions. And this is a platform by which to do that and, and delve into really what's happening. What are the underlying dynamics and offer ideas to help people move forward. So I understand that, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is a platform to 
put together a process that's going to work for you and your organization, depending on how you want to define feedback. So you can emphasize celebrations. You can emphasize maybe a more accountability approach if there's safety involved, for example, and the risks are really high to physical safety or emotional safety, psychological safety, what have you. So is that a way that you would um, offer up your solution is that, hey, here's some recommended ways, but you can really use this in the way that you deem appropriate. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. Sure. I'll let Serge go first, please. Yeah. No, yeah, absolutely. I think um, it's very customizable to exactly what are you trying to understand in this moment. Mm. Um, the thing that is really uh, key to us too is it's all about how is your experience with that individual and tailoring to how can you actually evaluate that specific person's performance. So you're not evaluating mm. your experience with the brand of William Sonoma, let's say. You're experiencing your experience with Rachel, just her mm. today. Right. Um, and the feedback also becomes um, much more tangible and actionable because when you receive a negative piece of feedback with no comment, none of those areas of improvement, then it's just telling me that I'm not very good, but not actually giving me anything to um, go and do to change it. Yeah, <laughs> but right. when you have the customer comment where they say exactly what went, what went wrong, when you have those areas of improvement, then you actually have tangible takeaways of here's how I go and change this. And then that mm -hmm. actually becomes, instead of this fight or flight mentality, it actually becomes empowering of now I'm armed with the knowledge of what I need to go do to get better, um, rather than feeling like I'm just helpless and told I haven't been good enough. Yeah, no, no love that. Unless you wanna add anything to that? I do because I, you know, I think you heard uh, Serge speaking before a lot about coaching in context, and that's what I think is so valuable here, right? Is now we're able to hear multiple different voices. Like if we think of some of the examples of customers, uh, banking, for example, which you know I'm so familiar with from my background, um, as we see it used with bankers, where they're able to get feedback from customers, um, they could also get feedback from colleagues. Right, because colleagues are there in the mm -hmm. branch observing them. You know, other managers from other lines of business in the branch. So now they have multiple points of feedback that they can see directly, right? And they can see it in questions that are relevant to their work, um, rather than something that's kind of um, generic across all jobs in the company. It's specific to the banker role that they're in. And then the role of the coach is to help them problem solve, not to mm. criticize, right? Not not to create this, you know, freeze. Uh, or flight, right? Yeah. Or fight, <laughs> whatever they all. <laughs> Freeze, fight, or flight. Yeah, you got yes, it. Exactly. All those reactions that we could potentially have to the negative, because uh, it often feels like a personality attack. Instead, mm -hmm. it's like here's feedback from the people that are important to you that you work with every day, your customers, your colleagues, and now your manager helps you problem solve. Yeah. 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 I to see this come to life. Uh, being a, because um, my background's in retail. So when I first started in this work in earnest, it was in retail to see the connection, obviously, and there was research, you know, at the time, the question that I have for you, because, you know, we have referenced re retail a couple of times, and there's a very obvious connection between the employee experience and customer experience when you talk about the store, but it's actually true in the distribution center, it's, you know, in the supply chain, and, and obviously internally. So what industries are most appropriate for this type of solution in your view, as well as in your experience? Is it, does it matter? Is, is it everybody, everything, or is it specific? You know, what, I'll, I'll toss that over to you, Serge, first. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we definitely find the most success with uh, customer facing teams. So you're interacting with a customer on a regular basis, whether that's a customer service role, a retail role, even sales roles we find, even in B2B sales, we're finding is a strong use case where you are going out and you're interacting with the customers, you wanna rate that experience with that specific individual. Um, we also find in metric driven environments. So if you're really held accountable to a key set of, here's the five metrics that determine your performance, this is a really great platform to visualize those metrics, have those metrics be accessible to those frontline team members. Often they're really locked away in a tight box. So mm -hmm. think in the retail environment, your sales per hour, your email capture rate, your credit card signups, um, how can we kind of combine those metrics in and create the full visibility of 
how am I doing? How am I doing compared to expectations? And then how do we bring all of that into coaching? So really any type of customer facing high volume, um, metric driven roles is where we see the most success, but we have ventured out into other places as well. Yeah. And I would agree with Serge, that's really what we've seen so far. But as you can see, what I'm seeing when I look at this is this could be for any employee in any company, right? right? It's a way to, to bring 360s in a way that could be so much more productive, I think, mm -hmm. in real time um, and actionable and have the follow up, have tools to be able to create tracking progress, even announcing to others. Part of making change is just telling others like, uh, maybe I'm not good at communication and I'm gonna work on that. And now I can get feedback on that regularly. And I've signaled to them I'm trying to improve so people are noticing and they want to help me, right? It, it's just a much, a much better way, a much more connected way um, of improving and really focused on the development instead of it being um, you know, punishment. Yeah, no, I love it. And there's a question that came in, which when we talk about different industries and different um, uh, situations, I think it's one that's very uh, prominent here in the Bay Area, as well as around the world with technology companies. And the question is, how would you implement deploy this with agile teams, you know, mainly scrum based teams? And how would it be different from using a more traditional, you know, hierarchical, you know, approach to maybe surveys and development? You know, thoughts there about scrum and agile? I'm glad to answer. I don't know if Serge wants to go first. You can go first and I'll add anything. Okay. I actually think this is a great application when you think about agile teams so that you have all these different people that you're working with that are constantly changing. You have mm -hmm. such a nice opportunity here to get feedback from all of them. If you think of them all as your internal customers or your mm -hmm. colleagues, however you like to think of them, you know, I'm working with this team a lot these couple of weeks, but now I'm suddenly working with another team. It's perfect to keep getting this kind of feedback ongoing right in the middle of your project so that you can keep improving and not waiting till months later when your manager says, you know what you did six months ago, it just wasn't that great. And it's out of context, you can't remember, they can't remember, it's happening in real time. So you can make those changes and continually improve. Yeah, I love it, Serge. Yeah, I think the only thing I would add is um, what we see with agile teams is when you're able to really um, identify, because it's so personalized, right? It's about your experience with Rachel. When you are kind of bouncing around um, different teams, it's actually really helpful to have that personalized experience um, and really kind of have that constant check-in on how am I doing and really understanding as you go from project to project and so forth, um, if expectations are changing, if my performance is now going down and how can I instantly in real time be notified of that and act on the fly. So like Melissa said, it's not at the end of the project, it's not at the end of six months later that you find out it wasn't good. You're really finding out in real time um, mm -hmm. and you're able to make those changes on the fly. Yeah, and I, I, I feel myself you know, getting excited and repeating myself insofar as I am getting excited. But the thing that I see you touching on, it, it's fun to see the world learn. And what I mean by that is so many times, whether it be with surveys or work in general, it's the question is asked or something like it, do you know how my work impacts a downstream outcome? how it impacts the organization's performance, how it impacts the group's performance. And what I'm hearing is that you're offering that insight and how it's gonna ebb and flow over time. And in turn, I can now take appropriate action. And from an, you know process standpoint, fantastic. From an analytical standpoint, also fantastic because I'm getting more data on a more frequent basis, which is gonna enable me to identify patterns identify what's working, what's not working. And so as we start to wrap up here, we have time for probably a couple more questions. Uh, and then we're gonna head over to the Medallia booth if you wanna talk directly with Melissa, uh, Serge or myself. Uh, when we think about uh, the context and the frequency and doing the analytics on the back end, um, you know, where are you uh, going with all this data that's going to be generated through this process. And is, do you have a point of view? I'm sure you do on the analytics that can be done with the data that's being generated here. Melissa, what are your thoughts? Yeah, we definitely do. Cause as you imagine, since, um, 
Stella Connect is part of the Medallia family, we're integrating. And so we can bring all the power of the Medallia platform with text analytics and AI, so we can really start to understand this more broadly, where we could look and say, maybe we need to offer different training to bankers, um, or maybe there's a different way we should change our processes to enable bankers to be mm -hmm. more empowered when they're interacting with customers in a certain way. There's so much potential and it's all, you know, primarily built on the unstructured data. Of course, the questions will be somewhat helpful, but I think the real gold is in the unstructured data that we're able to bring mm -hmm. in. And then we bring it in with other customer surveys. We bring it in with employee experience surveys. Um, so much opportunity on that backend analytics. Yeah, that's Serge. great, Serge. Yeah, so I think text analytics, kind of like Melissa said, um, the verbiage in our customer feedback is one of the most valuable pieces of our platform, I would say. Um, but what we're really excited about with the idea of analytics too is really the process of coaching the coach. How can mm -hmm. I get this data to really understand where I can coach coaches on how to be better coaches, right? And how can I track their coaching processes? I have now full visibility. This is something that's often very scattered today across organizations where um, if I'm a higher level in the organization, I don't really have good visibility into how my managers are actually managing. And so mm -hmm. now I can see that um, and actually drive improvement amongst the people driving improvement, right? Um, right? And we think that's a really exciting place to explore. Yeah, no. I, so as we go forward, as we start to, to wrap, I mean, w two questions. Number one, what do you think coaching is gonna be in six months you know, to a year? Do you see this approach, whether they're using Stella Connect or Medallia being widely adopted? I know, Melissa, you've seen this dynamic evolve over the years as have I. So we're certainly in a different place in 2021, 2022 than we have been uh, historically. But it, the adoption, I think, hasn't been there to a degree that when I say I should, that really appreciates the interconnection between the two, where the process is actually consciously managed, uh, not only at a individual level, but at a macro level across an organization or, or business group. So it, where do you see this going over the next six to 12 months? And I'll actually hold off on my second question and, um, in a sec in for, for, for the final question. <laughs> Okay, I'll do a quick answer and then I wanna hear Serge too. Um, so I, I think we're at an inflection point, right? So much has changed. Um, and I think people are really willing to make changes in the way things are done. And of course, now that we're so geographically dispersed, we're seeking connection. Um, mm -hmm. And this is a way that creates a process for us to do it. So it's not um, managers trying to figure it out on their own, which I think too often we're leaving managers to figure this out on their own or employees to figure out how to deal with feedback alone. Instead, we create a format and a system, right? And we can put the power of text analytics behind it so that we can really have a broader understanding and support people in making a change because employees do want to get better. We all generally want to get better and continue to be good at our work. Um, so it's really empowering. So I think we have this opportunity that we probably didn't have um, as much before. Yeah. Serge? Yeah. Serge? Um, so I think text analytics and guided action are going to be critical over the next six months to a year. How can mm -hmm. we kind of solve that blank slate problem and really have suggested topics, suggested coachings um, right on the fly and even eliminate some of the manager necessity for the manager to be the, always the one assigning those work? And how can mm -hmm. we suggest to the frontline team members without the manager's interference um, in it about here's the things that you should be improving. So I, th I think that's a really key um, mm -hmm. element of where coaching is gonna be going um, mm -hmm. and that it's gonna be a much more of this guided process um, where you're gonna kind of have your hand held through that coaching. And I think what we've seen just with COVID um, and as that's hit, everyone's been thrown into the deep end. So the rate of change that we're seeing and the rate of adoption, um, and it's really been the exacerbation of problems under COVID, right? Where the things that you were able to get away with, with managing by walking around and having all of these disparate systems to not really have a centralized coaching platform, all of these things are coming and catalyzing right now where um, it doesn't work in the new world anymore. Mm -hmm. And people really do need these tools and these centralized platforms to effectively conduct work and have an organization run at um, its peak potential and really empower those frontline team members to perform at their best, which is what we're all about.
Yeah, well, well said, and uh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, it is a requirement. When I was starting in this work in the early 2000s, it was seen to be a nice to have. Everyone appreciated there is a relationship between employee customer experience, but the idea of managing it was overwhelming. And what you're doing here is making it very whelming. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> very, very attainable. Um, so my final question, staying with you, Serge, how can people learn about you at Stella Connect and, and what you're up to? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, Go to selleconnect.com. Uh, definitely check out all of our, we have tons of great blog posts, a lot of really great industry thought leadership. We have a fantastic um, Slack channel for the CX community as well that's really robust and popular. Um, so lots of great materials, and I think I'll definitely get those over to you, Al, and I think we can get them out to um, everybody on this. A absolutely. How about you, Melissa? Uh, how can people uh, learn what you're doing um, and, uh, uh, what Medallia is doing in this space. Yeah, um, when you go on the Medallia website, we certainly have a section on employee experience, and I would recommend anyone go there or take a look at our blog posts about employee experience. We think we're taking um, a new approach with it. We think is much more empowering um, for everyone. So love, love to have you take a look at it and connect with us on LinkedIn. Well, we'll make sure it's in the uh, comments of the, this video when we uh, release it, uh, as well as in the snippets that we put out over the coming days. So you two, thank you for doing what you do. I mean, I, it's not only a value add for the organization to elevate its effectiveness, but it's truly improving people's lives. They're you know, elevating their confidence that they're doing the right things, that they're getting the support that they need, going back to Bill Macy's you know, research that you shared at the outset, Melissa. So I'm really um, excited for you. And so congratulations and look forward to following you all over the coming months and, and years, see where you're gonna take this. So thank you, be well. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, um, so if you're here, we're going to head over to the Medallia booth. Uh, Melissa, Serge, and I, we're going to do a quick debrief. You're welcome to join um, our discussion. You navigate. Uh, I'm going to end the session, then you can go over. and You'll see it um, in the page that you land on. If you're able to make it over there, great. If not, uh, you know, thanks for being here, and look for this recording uh, within the next 24, 48 hours. So thanks again. Thank you. Thank you.